need investigation notes will be maintained in a confidential file by the Affirmative Action Officer. The key word there was confidential. And again, for those of you who do not have this document in front of you, there were 20 steps before this specific one, and in all of those steps, not one of them mentions that you get the right to know about any of these grievances. Because you don't know, I would also like to take a quick second to define the word confidential to you. It means entrusted with private or restricted information. It is not your right. You don't get to know this. To make this clear, you had no right. It was not as if you implied at a press conference that the administration was hiding anything or keeping from you.
that that would be the best thing for those 400 students. We have 2,900 other students in our district that we need to be concerned about. Evans makes up about 12% of our district's population. Over at Beal, I have a fifth grade PE class that has 30 kids. I know that sounds high, but that's because of declining enrollment numbers at all of our schools are constantly fluctuating. Imagine your child comes home from school tomorrow and they tell you that in their class of 30 students, the teacher has decided to do what's best for four of them and not the other 26. Would that be acceptable to you? Because that's the best analogy I can give for how the rest of us feel about keeping Evans open at this point. I'm sick and tired of our town leadership spitting on our schools and telling us it's raining. I'm sick and tired of hearing about our declining, declining test scores. Our declining test scores are a direct result of our declining enrollment. If you had any idea what test scores are doing to the education in America, you would never bring them up again. Test scores are good for three things. They're good for politicians, they're good for people moving into new towns, and they're good for lining the bottom of your birdcage. <laughs> I have seen enough, I have heard enough, and I have had enough. Marlton is a resilient town. We have overcome the movie gate, the circle gate, the school choice gate, and the hey, let's get rid of John Scavelli gate. <laughs> because we're too great of a town not to. But the only way we're gonna overcome this is if we stop all this nonsense and do what's right for all the kids and all of our schools and consolidate now and thank you for your time. I'm a parent of a first grader. 
year, and my second child has not even begun kindergarten. He will start in 2018. I'm here tonight to express my concern about the recent actions of Mr. Student, Mrs. Stone, and Mr. McGooey. They not only violated the code of ethics by which they are bound, they compromised this board and violated the public trust. I question their ability to evaluate and analyze any matter that may come before this board. I do not believe they are capable of making independent, unbiased decisions. They lack the proper judgment to make decisions on behalf of the school district. Furthermore, I do not believe they are capable of making, I'm sorry, um, we need leaders on this board, not followers. Lastly, your actions, Mr. Student, Mrs. Stone, and Mr. McGooey, just might cost us some of the extraordinary teachers and staff that we cherish in this district. They just might, like me, would worry that their private personnel matters would be shared with the press. We cannot tolerate this on our school board, and not, quite frankly, I wish more parents were up here tonight. I want to speak for the next generation of Esham, and whatever nonsense happened here in the past, I don't know, 15 years, it ain't gonna be tolerated anymore, because we, the community, we need to express to the State Board of Ethics that this behavior is unacceptable. And I will not stop until I get that State Board to do something in this town. Because I cannot tolerate this and neither can this community you have embarrassed us throughout the state, God knows where else, okay? And my property taxes are gonna go down because people are not gonna wanna move to Marlton. This is not a great place to live. And unfortunately, I just moved here two years ago. I'm not putting my house up for sale again. So this has got to stop. It's an embarrassment, and it's unacceptable. And I come here to make a difference. I come here to inspire. 
I come here to create a safe place for kids to explore their talents and for kids to find themselves. Some more of our responses are posted over there on the banner. We always keep kids at the center of all of our decision making and planning. It's hard to do that in a climate of fear and distrust. I've been here for a really long time. A really long time. I was a young, non-tenured teacher here. I was an association rep here. I was a new principal and I was part of the middle school consolidation. Through all of those chapters and all of the chapters of my almost 30 years here in Asian, we as a district have always enjoyed a collaborative relationship between, among and between teachers, staff, and administration. We don't always agree, and we didn't always agree, but it was always with mutual respect and trust. Nobody wants to be the next headline, and without due process, we're all just one sound by the way from disaster. I'll take my chances for the sake of the good people of this district who come here every school day to help kids. I'll take my chance in asking you, please fix this. Inspiration, learning, empowering, caring. This is us. All this other stuff that's been going on, this is not us. Please, I ask you as board members with a deep respect for all that you do, please take a moment to, to reflect on what, what's your why. And if you find that your path is taking you away from your why, please cut a new path. For the state, sake of the staff, for the sake of the teachers, and ultimately for, ultimately for the sake of the kids. I don't live here anymore, but I did. And I have deep ties to this community. I married a loyal, hardcore heritage boy. I used to work at the Command Performance in the Kmart Shopping Center. That's how long I've been around Asia. And I owe everything to this community. With respect for all the people who have trusted me with the care of their kids for all these years and all the chapters of my career here, I'm asking you please fix this. Thank you. Husband, 
concerned resident and taxpayer, I find the result revolting politics has seeped onto the board. It is fair to say most residents, taxpayers, and parents expect education and the board itself to be nonpartisan. My understanding is several other residents believe in this theory. The Eastern Board of Education is an independent, free thinking, and a nonpartisan entity to implement the district's mission statement to promote excellence in an environment that engages students in a meaningful learning experience and set education policy throughout the whole township. The recent actions by board members Sandy Student, Nicole Stone, and William McGovern, William McGovern blatantly disregarded this theory. The actions of the three committed indicate you are not willing to turn down the path of your function. Indicate you are Journey down a path of partisan self-serving agenda with a politician, it also indicates to residents the three of you place township politics and petty feuds as a priority over students. The privacy and trust of district employees and the future of the district. Your actions were just were not just careless but egregious, violation of the School Ethics Act, which school board members in the state must abide by. If you three have any decency, if you have any morals, ethics, and care about the future of the district, the education of the students, and of course the privacy, privacy and morale of the district employees, you will resign effective immediately tonight so the district can begin healing from this embarrassing black eye. Thank you.
none of that. Shame on you. You shouldn't have even been here tonight. You should have resigned before this. So we could have put it into the paper.
However, tonight I must say that the ETA members speaking in support of consolidation do not speak for me or for my fellow colleagues at Evans. We have been through a lot of ups and downs in the past year and feel stuck between a rock and a hard place. Not one of us at Evans wants it to close. At the same time, we will be affected and hurt if jobs and programs are cut because our doors remain open. Like the other schools, our staff includes amazing teachers who we don't want to see let go and who should not be let go due to current circumstances. Thus, we stand to lose something no matter what. What we don't understand is how some of our fellow colleagues expect, expect us to be in support of something that closes our school. How they can lack the empathy that we work so hard to instill in the children we teach. How they cannot put themselves in our shoes and realize that they wouldn't be able to let their own school close. And if our colleagues can truly say that they say goodbye to their school, their home and family during the day without a fight, then I feel badly for them that they don't have a greater connection to their school community. You have heard hundreds of reasons over the past year why you should keep Evans open. I'm asking you to remember those reasons and reassuring you that the Evans community has not faltered in our hope to remain together. Good evening. My name is Brian Maxwell. I just want to thank um, all the teachers in this room, the administration. I have four children who went through the Eastern um, schools. They started at Jagger. One of my daughters um, is in special education. She's gotten an awesome education. Um, they were all either at Cherokee now or through Cherokee. They were well prepared for high school. Um, my oldest got a full tuition scholarship to Fairleigh Dickinson University based on his academics. This school district does amazing things. And the people who sit up there are a huge part of it. And the board members who violated their ethics and violated the trust of this community need to resign tonight. Thank you. Somewhere along the lines, I got lost. And then there, that's why we're here. It's one goal to make sure we get the best education possible, regardless of who likes who and who's on what side. And it honestly shouldn't be a side. Now, we shouldn't be dividing anymore. I moved here five years ago from Maple Shade because this school system, this education system, is amazing. My wife went through the whole system to graduate at Oakhorn Cherokee. That's why we're here. Three of our students in the system. Why? Because the system is that good. But right now, we're at a crossroad of what we can do. You know, I saw it tonight, I saw it a few weeks ago, but somebody says something, you get this part of the room collapse. <coughs> somebody, says, somebody says something else, you get this part of the room collapse. Well, that shouldn't be how it works. When somebody does something good, the whole room should be clapping. There shouldn't be a divide anymore. And I ask this all board members, this all sides, there shouldn't be a side, there should be one side. And that's, let's make sure we're making the best decision for our kids. And if we work together, we can achieve that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rosemary Bernardi, 10 Halifax Court East. Um, I'm Facebook Live, so everyone say hello. Show your signs. Um, I'm here because I need you three to resign. Well, you did. On January 12th was egregious. And Mayor Brown, hi. Mayor Brown, where are you tonight? You're not here. The Pro Bowl. Pro Bowl. That's more important than the school board meeting. It's more important than the residents here. It's more important than our children. Is it more important than our staff? Is it more important than our administration? No. It's about time we take back our schools, we make sure there is no politics in our schools, and it's time for the three of you to resign. Time 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 to go. Come on.